Hi there, welcome to nafham.com. Our lesson today is related to an important phenomenon occurs in the universe, which is the solar eclipse. But first, let's talk about the universe itself. What does it consist of? As a matter of fact, the universe has many different definitions and the theories. But there is a definition that is quite agreeable between scientists. It says that the universe is all of time and space with its all contents. The universe includes planets, stars, galaxies, and all matter and energy. The universe isn't well known and scientists say it may be either finite or infinite. Galaxies contain stars and planets, and they move in the universe with great speed away from each other. That's why we say that the universe expands as a huge balloon. So the distance between its components are great and measured in the light year unit. This unit is approximately 9 trillion kilometers. A light year is the distance that light travels in vacuum in one year. So it's a unit of distance, not time. We know that objects are dark, and we can't see them unless there is a light incidence on those objects that turns back or reflected upon our eyes in order to see them. Therefore, when sunlight spreads as straight lines on the objects, those objects prevent its path and become visible to us. And we see a shadow formed of those objects because light rays aren't directly incident on the place of the shadow. Here is a simple activity showing the kinds of shadow when the solar eclipse happen. If we use a small light source, we obtain a sharp shadow or a real shadow, dark shadow, and we don't see a rayon of semi shadow or brighter shadow. As we see here, this shadow in the picture. But if we use a bigger light source, we will obtain and see two rayons of shadow, a semi-shadow which is called penumbra and real shadow or dark shadow which is called umbra. Actually this happens also on the large scale, when the moon passes between the earth and the sun on one straight line. A shadow of the moon is formed as a result of preventing sunlight from the earth. This is a famous phenomenon called the solar eclipse. But why this phenomenon happen? Actually it happens due to the fact that the moon revolves around the earth and they both the earth and the moon revolve around the sun so when the moon comes between the earth and the sun making them nearly on one straight line in the space the moon hides sunlight from a part of the earth casting its shadow on it we will show that clearly on this picture so we see here when the moon comes between the sun, which is the biggest light source in the universe, and the earth, two rayons of shadow are formed. 
the first is B Nambra, which is brighter, and the second is Ambra, which is dark shadow. And we call this rayon here the cone shadow. So, after taking precautions, if we look to the sun during the solar eclipse, we will see the dark circle of the moon pass the lighted circle of the sun, despite being at the noon time. The solar eclipse phenomenon doesn't last more than 7 minutes and 40 seconds. During the moon's passage in front of the sun's circle, we can observe more than one type of solar eclipses. They are total, partial, and annular solar eclipses. So we see here in this video how those types happen. In the semi-shaded area of the moon, we can see a part of the sun forming what is known as the partial solar eclipse. But the total solar eclipse is formed in the shadow area of the moon on the earth in which we cannot see sun completely. However, when the moon comes in an orbit higher from earth as it revolves around it in an oval orbit, the cone shadow doesn't reach the earth's surface, so annular solar eclipse is formed, as we see here in this picture. There are special glasses we should wear to observe solar eclipses, because certainly you have observed that looking directly to the sun harms your eyes because of the huge illumination and the brightness of the sun. The sun also emits harmful and dangerous rays to the humans like ultraviolet and infrared rays that can lead to blindness or harmful kinds of genetic mutations. So these glasses are so important for us to wear and use when observing solar eclipses. And to this point we have come to the end of our lesson today. I hope it was useful to all of you and keep watching other lessons on nafam.com. Thank you for watching and goodbye for future lessons.